Have you ever looked at someone else's knitting projects and wondered how they got such a nice, even looking fabric, especially on a stockinette section? If you have, then I think I have a tip that will help you to improve your knitting so that it looks as good as it possibly can. I'm currently knitting on a blanket. And obviously when you work on a blanket, that is a flat piece of work. So you're not working in the round, you're working back and forth, which means usually, unless you're doing garter stitch, um, knit rows and purl rows. And one of the big complaints that I hear from a lot of people about their own knitting projects is that they get a gauge difference when they switch from working flat to working in the round. And so this has become quite a big problem for a lot of people lately because so many modern patterns are written where you would start at the shoulder and work flat for a period and then join everything in the round. So if your gauge is very different on your flat work versus your in the round work, it can result in having to make some concessions that you don't necessarily think about when you're first working on that pattern. I have seen it where people have decided to frog an entire jumper because that transition from working flat to working in the round is so obvious. It's such an obvious gauge difference that even a non-knitter would be able to recognize that there was an issue. Oddly, I haven't heard many people talk about what actually causes this. The reason for this gauge issue is because the size of the purl stitches and the size of the knit stitches are not the same. So in my opinion, the best way to resolve this issue is to fix your tension. When you're knitting, it's easy to get the knit stitch tension decent because it's such a simple stitch. A purl stitch is that bit more complicated to get the tension even all the way through and especially to get it the same as the tension on a knit stitch. So it might be that you have high tension on your knit stitches but you're unable to keep that tension through your purl stitches. There are a lot of ways that you could hold your yarn for me, I learned this way of holding yarn when I was a child. Um, I, th I think maybe my sister taught me how to hold my yarn this way. And I have held it this way ever since for both crochet and knitted work. And it has proved to be the difference between loose knitting and tight knitting. And by extension, the difference between my flat knitted work looking a bit rough and my flat knitted work looking machine made. I'm going to get a close up. I'm going to move and show you exactly how I hold my yarn so that you can see up close and personal exactly what I do to get that perfect tension to keep my knitting looking very nice and smooth all the time. Here's an up close view of the blanket that I'm working on currently. And I'm going to show you how I hold my yarn to get a nice tension on both my knit and purl rows. So I have my yarn here. This is where it's attached to the work. So first I slip the yarn between my ring and pinky fingers. Basically, what I want to do is to wind the yarn completely around that pinky finger. So I'm going to take it and roll my hand around. So that's all the way around now. And the yarn is going to run across my hand and then over my index finger. So you can see on my very dry hands that um, the yarn goes completely around this pinky finger and then under these two fingers and then back over my ring finger. So let's see this in action. I'm gonna make sure that it's nice and tight by pulling on this end when I start. 
So for this particular pattern, I have knits and pearls in this row that I'm working now. This is the pattern row for this wave stitch. So I've got my garter border with the knit stitches, and then I work a pearl two together. And I work a Norwegian pearl, but I'm able to keep the tension nice and high because I hold my yarn this way. So working a purl stitch is not very different from working a knit stitch in terms of my tension. My tension stays the same across knit stitches, purl stitches, knit two togethers, because I'm able to control it so neatly with this way of holding my yarn. So I get these nice purl two togethers. And you can see that it keeps all of the work really close to the needles. I'm working with the needle tips, not with a lot of the shaft of the needle. Um, if you do too much of your work on the needle shaft, you're going to find that you get a looser tension. And if you really want your purl and knit sides to look the same, you're going to need to get your tension higher. Nice tight tension is what makes the difference. Really, it's even tension that makes your work look the best, but the easiest way to do that is, for me, is with a tight tension. Let's have a look at this, doing it with the throwing method. So I'm going to arrange the yarn the same way, wrapping it all the way around my pinky finger, and then under the next two fingers and over my index finger. Let me do that one more time so you can see. In between pinky and ring, all the way around the pinky, under the next two fingers, over the index finger. So all of the tensioning is actually being done between these two fingers, and then it's being fed between those fingers as well. So we're going to do these purl two together. You can see that when I'm throwing, the yarn is held at a, uh, a larger distance from the work and that's simply because that works better for me for throwing. I'm a lot slower at throwing than I am at picking. I do um, use picking all the time these days because I find it so much faster and easier. But you can see that I can keep the tension high all the time. So every stitch when it's finished gets pulled tight and every new stitch um, the yarn is held tight through the throwing motion. Move the yarn to the back for the knit stitches and I have, this is a lace pattern. So I have yarn overs here as well. But just notice how tense that yarn is. And that is what gives me the really nice appearance to this stockinette that's worked flat. So you can see it's nice and firm along here. It is also firmly held along here. There are a couple of other options for how you might hold your yarn if you are picking that will also give you higher tension. And there are a variety of tools that have been uh, all over the internet right now, all over social media in particular, that are meant to try to help you with this. I'm not sure how well any tools will work if you are not doing something already to deal with the tensioning in your hand. Now it is possible to tension simply by going over and under your fingers like this, but I find it's a little harder to control that tension for me when I merely do that. You can use 
little rings that have a loop for the yarn to feed through. I've seen those quite a lot, but they are just to control a free flow of the yarn and to keep it at the end of your finger. So definitely you need to find a way that works for you for tensioning. I have seen a kind of over under like this, where actually the yarn is, it's very difficult to show this, but the yarn at the back is being gripped between my fingers and the work. It's being pinched by those fingers at the, on the back of the work. That can work as a tensioning option. My recommendation is that you have two points of tension in whatever your tensioning method is. So here you would have this tension point and this tension point and you're able to move that finger a bit more. You can do it between any combination of fingers, just find something that works for you that does give you at least two points of tension. The more points of tension that you have on the way that you hold your yarn, the tighter your knitting is going to be. So if you find that you're a loose knitter and you want to convert to being a tight knitter, if you find you have issues with your loose knitting, this is what I would recommend. I would recommend finding a way of holding your yarn that keeps the tension higher. And that is all the difference between loose knitting and tight knitting. Here are some other examples of pieces of work that I've done in a flat knitting style. Although this is made in acrylic, it's not very high quality yarn, it's quite bobbly. There is very good tension across it and I completely put this down to the fact that when I was very first taught to knit, I was taught to tension my yarn quite tightly from the very beginning. And because I was taught to tension my yarn tightly, when I was making my very first garment for myself, not only was I able to get a very, very even stockinette fabric, in spite of this being a seamed flat work, I was also able to produce a really very even, complex color work design. Obviously, there are places where it isn't perfect, but as I said, this was the first garment I ever knitted for myself. It was the very first time I tried color work. I had no idea that this was such a complicated color work pattern. I simply did it, and it was possible because of the way I tensioned my yarn. Here's another example from last summer. This one should be the most visible of all of them. Not only because this is, again, a seamed flat work and in light colors, but this is also cotton linen. Something I see a lot of people complaining about when they knit with cotton linen is that it's unforgiving. Uh, if you make a mistake, they people feel that it's incredibly visible on cotton linen blends uh, or anything with that plant fiber. But as you can see, good tension makes all the difference. Even the ribbing is nice and even. This is a bit of an unusual rib in that it is one by two, but you can see that it's really quite even, although it's cotton, so it has more distortions it is still very even work. The final piece I can show you is my most recent large stockinette project. It is a black wool short sleeved jumper. And the reason I show you this one is that this is one that was knit flat from the top and then starting here, it was done in the round. And there is not any kind of obvious difference in the tension 
between the flat worked section and the circular section. Good tension, even tension, perfect gauge is possible on wool, on plant fibers, and on acrylics, regardless of your experience level. As long as you find a way of tensioning your yarn, where your tension on your knit stitches and the tension on your purl stitches is the same. I hope this video has been helpful for you and that you find a way to get your own tension just exactly the way you want it, to get your purl stitches and your knit stitches nice and even so that you produce beautiful pieces of knitted work every time. Good luck, be well, and happy knitting.